this is what I currently have going on for my toads. It's boring, it's sad. Also, that's dirt beneath the tank under the shelf that I can't reach, by the way, like way down on the carpet. Um, but this is my baby toads. This enclosure is boring and it's, are they all hiding right now? Uh, there's two of them. It's boring, it's sad. I don't like looking at it. It's not fun to look at. And um, since they're growing consistently and they're getting bigger, I figure I'll give them a little polydarium that like lets them, you know, like enjoy life more because this is boring. So this is a 12 by 12 by 12 exoterra. I don't even think this is their tiniest size, but oh my gosh, is it tiny? I don't like the backgrounds, so we just gonna, we don't want it. Hey guys, coming to you from a voiceover over this time lapse of me boiling some Malaysian driftwood. So why am I boiling the driftwood? Well, typically when you boil driftwood, it is to cleanse it, it is to remove tannins, or it is to remove air from inside the wood so that it sinks. I like tannins, so I'm not doing this to remove tannins, but you'll notice that the water gets super like golden and then eventually turns really deep, rich brown. That's the tannins in the water. Tannins are good for aquatic creatures, so there's no reason to remove them, but the process of cleaning the wood does remove them, especially in darker woods like Malaysian driftwood, so that's just something to keep in mind. Even though I, I boil this, it will still leach a lot of tannins throughout its time being soaked in the water. Malaysian driftwood is actually my favorite aquarium driftwood because it sinks automatically. It has a super lovely dark rich color under the water. It comes in different shapes and sizes and also it's easy to find. You can find it at pet stores, you can find it online. And generally speaking, you're not going to be disappointed with the shape. Like sometimes if you order driftwood online for an aquarium, they'll send you like a stick. Whereas with little Malaysian pieces, a lot of them have like unique texture and unique shape to them. So I'm typically not very disappointed. They can also like be stacked really well, like on the bottom. In my 15 gallon right now, I have three pieces stacked like so that a piece that might appear boring by itself looks cooler because it's stacked with another piece which is actually something that i do later in the polydarium which you'll see in the video but again the purpose of boiling the driftwood here really is just to cleanse it this piece i actually got by accident i ordered fluker's driftwood from chewy and they sent me two pieces out of the three i ordered and then for the third piece they accidentally sent me malaysian driftwood which was fine because i ended up using it anyway but i did eventually get my fluker's driftwood and it worked out perfectly because i got such an amazing piece so that's happened before with chewy not like not fulfilling my order or anything like that but like where a happy circumstance has happened from a little bit of a mishap anyways if you're not using malaysian driftwood and you're using something like manzanita which is my second favorite aquarium driftwood it is a much different process manzanita is a lighter wood and will still be very dark under the water but not as dark as malaysian it also doesn't leach as many tannins because it's a lighter wood and also it does not sink like eventually over time it will but it takes so long like malaysian driftwood you could drop it in water and see it sunk all on its own in this in this um pot but like in an aquarium it takes forever to sink so what i like to do with manzanita is to secure it to a large piece of slate so that it is like stuck to the bottom and then eventually will fill with water all the air will leave it and it will stay down there on its own but because it's already to the tile you know it's already down there so basically with driftwood you can take a piece of tile and you can secure it with aquarium safe silicone onto the tile or whatever type of um, material you're using that's going to be heavy enough to keep it down and or you could also just put it in a bucket of water and like put something on top of it to hold it down under the water and just let it naturally uh, saturate and all the air will come out and then it will sink on its own so whichever one you prefer that's up to you but if this is your first time using any sort of aquarium driftwood i totally recommend malaysian because it sinks automatically and has a lovely rich color it's also worth noting that manzanita and Malaysian driftwood can be used in dry setups as well. So they're not purely an aquarium driftwood. However, not all driftwood can be used in an aquarium. Keep that in mind. Like if you bought Fluker's driftwood from Chewy, you don't want to put that in an aquarium. That would be horrible. <laughs> you don't want to do that. Um, if it doesn't say specifically made for aquariums or if you haven't researched what wood is good for aquariums, I would not use it for an aquarium. But that's just me. You know, personal experience has lent that to me. <laughs> when you take the wood out, make sure that you use tongs. It's very hot and you don't want to 
burn yourself in boiling water. Then you can just dump the water out, clean the pot, that's done with. Set the wood aside to cool. It dries very fast. As you can see, the light color on this like extension of the driftwood is showing that it's already dried quite a bit, but you can see the steam coming off of it. And obviously, you want it to cool before you put it in an enclosure so that you don't hurt an animal or like alter their temperatures too much. So yeah, just set it aside and let it cool. And you'll see another piece in the background there that I had already had. I just dipped in to boil for a couple seconds so I could rinse it off because it's already been cleaned before in the past. This is Carob Sea Supernaturals, it, and it comes with this little, like, magnetic thing pack. I just throw it away. Whatever. I got it from Petco. It's, like, $5. I've been using this sand since 2013. It's my favorite aquarium sand. Super fine. It always comes relatively clean. It's, like, I just rinse it a couple times here, and it's immediately clean. Doesn't cloud my water. It doesn't, like, kick up easily. Like, once it sets in, it makes, like, a nice firm layer, and it's super white. It's gorgeous. So, basically, I just dump some in a bucket pour water into it, rinse it around with my hand, and then dump out uh, the top surface of the water without dumping out any sand. So now this is just me cleaning the exoterra with a wet rag just to get any dust or anything off, you know? You don't want to just build right into it and end up having nasties in the enclosure. So then I started putting my sand in, and this is a bit of a messy task, and I probably could have found a better way to do it, and I even dropped the bucket like I see as you see there's sand all over the ground on the side of the enclosure there my bad i've used this sand for amphibians for many years i've used it for fish i absolutely love it it is so soft to the touch and like just i know it works really well with my axolotls it has worked really well with my fish it's worked well with frogs so yeah it's just my go-to sand in fact i have just had these two bags sitting in my closet because I always have extra of supplies. So then now we're going to put a background. Well, I don't know why I said we. I'm going to put a background on this enclosure because, again, I hate that styrofoam one in the back. A lot of people may like it. I don't like it. So I'm just putting a plain black backdrop on here. And also, I was using double-sided tape, which is a pain in the butt to work with. And I ran out of tape. Also, that moment where I just got up was because I saw a Dubia roach crawling across my floor. So, just cute, relatable pet people things, am I right? So, now I'm just trying to fix the tape that I had messed up. It's, a, it's annoying, but eventually I get it right. In a polydarium that was, like, meant to last, I would put together a much more elaborate setup and background and everything. But because this is just for some baby toads and will eventually not work for them anymore, I'm not going to go all in on it. You know what I mean? So these are the two pieces of Malaysian driftwood. Here I am trying to figure out what to do with this stick piece, which I absolutely hate, but, you know, I might as well use because it's just sitting in my closet. Then I put in these two plants, which, um, by the way, they will not be there later. I ended up finding different plants and liking them better, so I switched them out. But for the time being, this is what you're going to see. So I put one plant in. I'm trying to cover the bottom of it with more sand. It was really annoying to get to stay in place because it doesn't have like a, a heavy rock on the bottom that's going to keep it straight. And then I did the same thing with the next one where I just like fanned out the branches and I put it inside the enclosure and dumped sand over the bottom as well. These plants actually came from Amazon, but you could probably find them at like your local michaels or hobby lobby or some sort of craft store where they're gonna have like fake plants it's actually a lot cheaper than buying plants advertised for aquariums and reptiles so if that interests you then go for it medusa here on youtube actually does a lot of like thrift hauls for her reptiles so if you're interested in that sort of content be sure to check that out right now i'm just spraying sand off my hand and then i'm going to spray it off of the driftwood just to make sure that it makes a nice clean looking atmosphere and then all I have left to do now is put this little plant in in the front, and it's an exoterra fern in the size medium. I don't know why they don't have a small. Oh, wait, maybe it is small. They only have small and medium or medium and large. I can't remember, but it's the smaller version. Now I'm trying to put the lid on, and for some whatever reason, I struggled to put it on, and I struggled later to do so too, so I don't know what my problem is, but I just can't put lids on. Right now, I'm going to take water from their current tank and put it in this tank, so it's like a 50-50 mix of fresh water and then their tank water because the frogs are so small they don't have a filter like it would be too powerful for them to have a filter and so basically i've just been doing water changes twice a week in their enclosure to make sure that cleanliness you know stays up to par and then in this one i'll siphon out water with the turkey baster and i'll clean up their poops with that as well because like i said the sand sits nice in place it's really easy to clean the surface of the sand with the turkey baster that's how i do it in my axolotl tanks that's how i do it in my 
uh, African dwarf frog tank. It's my favorite. Like I just, I love this sand. And here is a tiny little tour of this tiny little polydarium that I built because I was bored in quarantine for my tiny little frogs. And yes, there are frogs, even though they're also called toads. They're actually frogs. I know it can be confusing. And speaking of frogs, I'm actually going to get them and show you them one by one. So, so this right here is Aang. Boop. And next up, I think, is Katara. Boop. And next up is either Soph or Taka. Soph or Taka. Oh my god, that's Sokka. I can't believe I just said that. I'm keeping that in because that's funny. And then that's Toph. So those are my four young yellow-bellied toads, which are European fire belly toads. There they are. I've never introduced them on this channel yet, so I need to think of a good way to do that. But I feel like it would just be a really short, boring video because they don't really have that much backstory. They're just baby toads. But yeah, they're super cute. They're very fun to watch. They have already had a lot of like adult behaviors like in Plexus and the Unken reflex. Like they're just they're just amazing. To make sure that the water doesn't sit still or like get stagnant, what I'm doing is putting an air tubing through the back corner. It's kind of a challenge while recording, but yeah, it's right there. And I just want to make the water move a bit without having a strong current. This air tube is actually part of the air tubing I have for my African dwarf frog tank, which I just moved to this side of the room. So it actually worked out really well. And next, I'm just going to clean the front a bit so I can actually see them and get the sand to be, you know, actually on the ground instead of on the surfaces. And then I'm going to include some clips of them exploring, but then I'm going to come back later to show you changes that I made to the polydarium the same day. Actually, I think I made them that night because I am who I am. I'm never satisfied with an enclosure and I'm constantly trying to think of new things to do. It is what it is. So I actually um, hated it, <laughs> so I put different plants in there that I got out of Roku's enclosure because I replaced Roku's plants. So now it has these plants also, that's their poop, love that. Just cleaned it last night, there's not any more poop. Um, but yeah, I, I moved one plant to the back, which was in there earlier, and then I just added different plants. But yeah, that's it, nice and simple. I wanted to show off the wood more in the front, which is why I moved it.